Hello? Patricia Love here from Love Healing Hearts. Here to talk about self-esteem, ladies. Now this one is mainly directed at the ladies today. And the reason for that is we're going to deal with the men too. But the reason for that is because we have been in the shadows long enough, you imperfected ones. And when I say you, I'm including myself. We have been imperfect. We have been sorry and apologetic for all of our imperfections and for being overweight, for being old. Yes, I'm 62 years old. And I am over, well, we won't say how many pounds, but you could probably take a wild guess and be pretty accurate. That's a little too personal, but <laughs> I'm not letting all the cats out the bag. Some of this is my business. But listen, you guys, we have really got to stop this. You are at a point where you almost seek the worst men. You seek people that you think you won't even uh, uh, take into consideration the kind of man you really want because in your mind, there's no way he would want you. Now, you know that's not true. The man I married, I had the same mindset when I was younger in the Lord. I was in my 30s thinking there is no way that man would be interested in me. Because when you looked at he was the best dressed man in the church. Nobody beat him dressing. And he wasn't flashy. He dressed like a rich man with good taste, but very conservative. He carried himself like an aristocrat. I mean, he just had this, this outgoing personality that filled the room. Everyone else, every other man, including the pastors, whoever were around, male or female, everyone around just, just shrunk in his presence, not in a way where he made them look small or feel small, but because he towered so well and he had such a presence about him, all the women looked up at him like, oh, oh, could I be the one? Oh, he's just so wonderful. You know, and I was drooling too, but I did mine in private. Yeah, I wasn't about to let anybody see me drool over that, but I was right with the rest of them. I refused to beg. I just refused. I refused to flirt. I wasn't going to go there. I said, if that one is supposed to be my one, God will make it happen. And if he doesn't make it happen, then that's good for me because that means I have eliminated another round of headaches. And you see what happened. Yep. One marriage later, after an adulterous relationship of eight years with my first husband, there he was. Yep, ready, willing, and able to finally check me out. And he gave me a call. I was shocked, just out of the blue, never saw it coming. Yeah. So I want you to know, you can have the man of your dreams. Now, unless somebody else has got him, well, you know, <laughs> You know, God can always work things out down the road. But in the meantime, you just got to find another man of your dreams. There are plenty of them out there. Unfortunately, there are not plenty of good ones. So you've got to ask God to sift through and find the right one for you. And when, you're ha when you have a low self-esteem, you know your clothing your hairstyles, your outfit, the way your facial expression looks, everything shows that you feel nothing of yourself. You can see it a mile away. I can look at people and tell when their self-esteem is extremely low. I can see it. Male and female, I can spot them a mile away. Been there, done that, so I can recognize it when I see it in someone else. Now, when I say that, Confident people like to be around confident people unless there's something wrong and their confidence is phony and they're extremely insecure. 
then they want somebody who's way more insecure than them so they can browbeat them, beat them down to make themselves feel powerful and feel like they are someone, someone of value themselves. So yeah, there's a lot of psychological stuff going on there. But I'm going to tell you one thing, abusing people who do a lot of abusing of other people are extremely insecure. They have a lot of fear. People who are controlling or, or micromanaging, those people have a lot of fears, a lot of insecurities. We don't see it because they mask it with a certain stage presence that they have learned to usurp. But the controlling factor, the micromanaging, the abusive words, the abusive treatment, the jealousy, the suspicion, all of that is your first indication that you're dealing with a very little person with a very little self-esteem. Stay far away. I don't care how cute they are. I don't care how much money they carry. I don't care how fancy their car is or how big their house is. Leave that alone. Run, run the other way. That one is hell on wheels, baby. Now, the other way you can tell insecure people is the way they dress. That's, uh, that's why I did this. Uh, I'm not trying to show off. Uh, when you are insecure, a lot of times you don't know what looks good on you, what doesn't look good on you. So you wear anything that someone else looks cute in thinking it's going to work for you. Not all body parts and all body styles, shapes, and sizes can wear what anyone else can wear and look good. Now, if I stepped out here in a uh, pair of shorts that were skin tight and an extremely tight top, where belly folds, everything else is showing. A sleeveless top that's cut down to my navel with cleavage uh, a mile long. And a bad hairstyle. People would, I mean, I'm going to draw laughs. People will laugh. So sometimes what we do when we're insecure we dress in a way that tells the world, I don't care what I look like. And I don't care what you think about me. And some of that is a self-sabotaging. And that is a way of saying, I'm not going to get anything anyway. So I'm going to do and look the way I want to look. Because that way, if somebody wants me, they'll have to sift through all the bad looks and prove to me they want me. Other than that, I already know I'm not going to get anybody. So that to hell with it. No, you don't dress for someone else. You dress for yourself. Let me tell you something. My husband was 100% blind. That means no, no indication through his lids of, of, of light. There, was, there were no shadows. There were no shapes. He was 100% blackness blind. And when he, when I went out, I dressed myself. I would dress like this to go to the hair salon and do hair. I would dress like this to go to the store. I wasn't dressing one way for work, one way for church, one way for every day. I dressed according to my mood. Now, the other one you saw before this where I came out in my T-shirt, that was a T-shirt and a, and a pair of pants. That was super casual for me because I like dressing. And I'm not dressing to impress. I'm dressing because I like the way I look in certain types of clothes. And if I like the way I look, I'm going to feel confident when I go out. Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't want to go out in something that makes me feel like, oh, I want to hide. Okay? 
It took me years to get past the point that I will never be a slender person. So now that I've accepted myself as I am, I'm going to work it. And you need to do the same. Find out what colors look good on you. If you are an olive complexion, if you have olive complexion, if you are brown skin or, or maybe dark skin, but, but olive, you know, sometimes, you know, brown and dark skin are, are more of a, uh, they have a different tone to their skin and they can wear some of the other colors. I, can, I cannot wear orange. I cannot wear green. You're talking about somebody looking dead. I look like warmed over death wearing a pure green outfit. But if the green has blue in it, I can wear that. So you have to investigate. Take time to think of you and say, now, what makes me look my best? What face shape am I? I'm a round face, so I have to wear long hairstyles. I can't wear round hairstyles. They'll make my face look even plumper and wider. My neck is, sh is short, so I can't wear big old turtlenecks. It'll look like my head is sitting on my shoulders. And my husband showed me something about men's clothing. He said, when a man wants to really look classy, extravagant, the one mistake he sees a lot of men make, and I never even noticed it, but I always wondered what made some men look ooh-la-la -la, and what made other men look frumpy and they, they both have similar outfits. Okay. He told me the tie can make or break your outfit. You, he said, you never wear, especially if you have any kind of pooch. You, that's a belly. <laughs> you never wear a tie cut shorter, you know, sitting around here. You always wear that tie all the way down where the tip touches your belt the top of your belt. That way, when, when you move and you walk around, there is no gap between the bottom of the tie and the belt, uh, it, you know, your waistline where your pants come up to. Well, what that does is when you do wear a tie that's too short, it brings everyone's attention to the belly. <laughs> we don't know about things like that, but there are certain outfits that will make you or break you. With women, you want to wear, you want to uh, look more shapely, wear shapely looking clothes. This is not tight. You see how roomy it is? It's not tight, but it accentuates a waistline. So that's what you work. You work the waistline. You work your shape. You have one, work it. If you are extra wide on the bottom, Wear flowing skirts like what I have on. Nice, wide, angles, not gathered skirts. Whatever you do, heavy women, don't wear gathers. Not That's a no-no. You can wear elastic waist like I, like I have, but don't wear gathers. It accentuates weight. Don't wear clothes too small for you. It accentuates overweight. It makes you look like a sausage that's about to bust out of your clothes. It's not attractive. You may think it's sexy, but it is not. Okay, now that we've dealt with the physical side, let's get back to the emotional stuff, okay? When you wear your hair, when you do things to yourself in the mirror, you get ready to go out. I'm not talking vanity. I'm talking presentation. The way when you can stand in the mirror and say, Okay, I can walk out in public and hold my head up high. You're not prancing around like Miss Prima Donna, like, I'm all that and a bag of chips, baby. Hey, no. You're presenting yourself in a way that you want to see yourself. And if you get to the point where you don't care anymore, oh, baby, you have got to get in God's face and ask him to heal you. You have got to stay there. I mean, constantly go back, go back, go back until the work is complete. I don't care if it takes a month, a year, 10 years. Keep going because once the healing is done, it's done. You will never have to go back and re readdress that one again. God is thorough with his healing. He doesn't play. Okay, we're going to talk some more. I'll get back with you. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.